Roll for Crit presents How to Play God of War, the card game in five minutes or less or more. God of War is the cooperative card game based on the video game that follows Kratos, his son, and his midlife crisis. Designed by Alex Alteanu and Fel Barros and published by Come On! Your goal in God of War is to complete two quests followed by one final boss, each with its own unique objectives. Each player begins with a hero sheet featuring their special rage ability and a personal deck of action cards. Each quest will feature a series of double-sided scene cards arranged in a specified pattern. Players will place their hero standees at the bottom of one of the scene's columns to start. Then all players draw seven cards from their decks and the game begins. On your turn, you have a number of options which you can take in any order, the first being movement. To move, take your hero standee and place it in a column adjacent to the one you were in previously. Only two heroes can occupy a column at a time. When entering a column with another hero, one hero needs to be placed in front of or behind the other. This will be important when enemies attack later on. You can also use your movement to swap places with another hero in your location. You can only move your hero once per turn. Now let's examine the action cards you'll be playing on your turn. First, we have attack cards, which come in two flavors, melee and ranged. Every scene will feature one or more enemies that you can attack using these cards. You must be in the same column as an enemy in order to attack it. Melee attacks will affect the enemy directly in front of you, while ranged attacks can target either the closer enemy or the enemy at the top of the column. Once you've played an attack card, you can also modify it by adding one or more number cards to add to its total attack value. Some attack cards have a base number to start with, while some require modifiers in order to do any damage. Keep in mind that while you can play multiple number modifiers, you can only play Play one base attack card per attack. The total value of your attack is how much damage you'll do to your target, but there's a catch. First, you'll need to roll the enemy die. Then, you'll need to subtract the result of the roll from your total damage output. Add that many damage counters to the enemy to keep track, either on its card or, in the case of some stronger enemies, on its tracking card. If the total damage is equal to or greater than its health value, it is defeated. Once an enemy is defeated, a couple different things could happen. Typically, a death token is placed on top of them as a reminder that they're no longer able to attack or activate in any way. Sometimes you'll see the death symbol with some arrows around it. This indicates that when the enemy is killed, the card should be flipped to its other side, possibly triggering new effects and possibilities. Some enemies have armor. Damage to armor does not carry over, so it needs to be destroyed all in one attack. As long as an enemy still has its armor intact, it can't be damaged. The enemy die doesn't get rolled when attacking armor. In addition to attacks and numbers, there are also special cards. These have an instant effect, such as allowing players to draw cards or heal, and can even be played outside your own turn. Certain cards in a scene may allow you to interact with them. This will be indicated by interaction spots in gray boxes. You may be required to spend cards here or place tokens, which may result in you receiving a Shatter Crystal card, flipping cards, or some other effect. In fact, there are several reasons a card might flip over, so in general, look out for flip symbols and which cards in the scene they're referring to. You may have noticed that several action cards feature rage symbols. Every time you play one of these cards, your rage tracker moves up one space on your hero card. When that track is full, your ability is available to use whenever it's appropriate, after which the track resets to zero. Some action cards feature multiple options. When played, you must choose which of these options you want. As soon as you've played one or more cards for a single action, they're discarded. Once you've done all the moving and card playing that you can or want to for your turn, you carry out the scene activation step. Draw the top card of the upgrade deck and look to see which rune symbol it has in the top right corner. Then, compare it to the current scene. Any scene card with a matching rune symbol is now activated. If there's more than one, activate them in order from left to right, top to bottom. If the activated card is an enemy, they'll attack. An enemy in the front row will target the column it's in and possibly those to its immediate left and or right if it has directional arrows indicating as such. An enemy in the back row will target the column farthest away from it. The player at the front of the targeted column is the one who will be taking the attack. Each enemy has an attack value, which tells you how much damage they'll do. Players don't get to roll a die to block any of it, but they can use another card type from their hand, defense cards. These can be played with a base and modifiers just like attack cards, canceling out damage equal to the value of the played cards. Any damage you do take is marked on your hero sheet with tokens. If a hero ever has damage equal to or exceeding their health value, they're knocked out. Knocked out heroes aren't able to take actions until the scene is over, but they do still draw scene activation cards on their turn. If all players get knocked out, the game is over. Some enemies cause other effects, such as poison or stun if they deal damage. In those cases, take the appropriate card and place it on top of your deck. Some abilities allow you to stun an enemy. When activated, stunned enemies remove their stun token instead of attacking. 
Not all runes cause enemies to attack when activated. Read the scene cards when the time comes, and they should tell you what to do. Once all players have taken their turns and drawn scene activation cards, you'll draw one extra scene activation card and resolve it in the same way. Then, all players discard any remaining cards in hand. Now, beginning with the start player and going in clockwise order, each player gets to take one of the scene activation cards drawn during the round and add it to their deck. If you don't want to take a card, you can instead remove one card from your discard pile permanently to help thin out your deck. Anytime you add any card to your deck for any reason, it is placed face down on top of your deck to be drawn on the following turn. Once everyone's chosen, any leftover upgrade cards are placed at the bottom of the main deck. Then a new round begins with players drawing a new hand of cards. Keep in mind, some effects may modify your hand size. If your deck ever runs out, reshuffle your discard pile. Once you've completed a quest's objective, players reset their health and rage tracks and remove any stun, poison, or crystal cards from their decks, keeping any upgrade cards they received. You'll choose a new quest from a randomly drawn selection of two. Whichever scene you don't choose will be flipped over, resulting in a negative effect which you must follow. After completing a second quest, you'll repeat the process when choosing a final boss, this time from three options, and with two negative effects in place. Defeat the final boss and you've won the game. You lose if all heroes get knocked down, or you meet a quest's special lose condition. Some heroes are less straightforward than others, such as Mimir, who is attached to another player, only plays support cards, and doesn't get a turn of his own. Or Brock and Sindri, two heroes controlled by the same player. Read your cards, use your abilities wisely, and you'll do fine. In conclusion, move, attack, support, defend, rage. That's God of War, the card game in a nutshell. Did you get all that?